Brain Biotech AG is at the forefront of the next wave in industrial biotechnology, with a strong focus on enzyme innovation and AI-driven discovery. In this session, CFO Michael Schneider's response to the seven most frequently asked questions from institutional investors regarding technology, growth, mergers and acquisitions, U.S. market exposure, and the main factors that will impact Brain's future performance. Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, and uh, of course, more than happy to answer your questions. All right, Michael, let's dive right into our first question. What exactly are enzymes, and why do they present such an exciting opportunity for investors? Well, what are enzymes? Enzymes are proteins. They are primary components of all living organisms, so microorganisms, plants, animals, but also humans. And Within our bioindustrial business, we focus on the microbial part of enzymes. Within our bioincubator business, we focus more on the human applications. Enzymes act as natural catalysts, so they make biochemical reactions happen much faster than they would otherwise in nature. And But also in industrial applications, enzymes are very, very useful helpers. So essentially what they do is they work at low temperature, low pressure, and moderate pH i.e. they lose much less primary energy than similar chemical synthesis processes. Enzymes are readily biodegradable ions. They are environmentally friendly solutions to industrial problems. Enzymes are mostly natural and preferred by consumers compared to chemical compounds. And to give you an idea, the global enzyme market is about 6 billion in size. It's growing mid-single digit every year with very attractive margin profiles. Hence, also for investors, quite an attractive space to be invested. Michael, what sets Brain Biotech apart from other players in industrial biotechnology? Our competitive edge is clearly our unique and shared technology platform, which feeds essentially our three business models. First of all, our products business, so mainly in enzymes here, for the food and life sciences industry. Secondly, the CDMO business, so the contract development and manufacturing organization, majorly focused here on the life sciences space. And last but not least, the contact research organization, the CRO business, which basically developed innovative enzyme solutions and microbial solutions for industrial partners. We are kind of like a one-stop shop, really, for our customers, from the discovery of enzymes over scale up to the industrial size production and fermentation. And you could say there are many specialists in the market for each of these segments. There's hardly anybody who can offer the full value chain and get fully integrated as we how is artificial intelligence transforming Brain's approach to enzyme discovery and design? AI is essentially playing also the ever-increasingly role here at Brain. So nature remains really our role model for what we do, but the methods we use have become increasingly digital in the last years. For many years now, we already employ bioinformatics tools for more efficient enzyme discovery and design. The tools has grown over the last years, essentially integrating increasingly machine learning tools into it, and most recently also AI tools into our platform. For example, for enzyme discovery and design, we have published the so-called Med Extra platform, which is available to our customers, with about 99% novel sequences. In addition to that, we can also integrate public databases. We have digitalized libraries of biodiversity, if you want so with integrated toolbox for AI-generated enzymes, i.e., if you can't find wet enzymes in nature, we can essentially design them as they are needed by our customers. We have an advanced technology portfolio from discovering novel natural enzymes up to synthetic enzyme applications. And these tools really make us more competitive. They lead to faster and more efficient solutions for our customers. And what ideally complements essentially our skills here in AI AI and machine learning is our proprietary genome editing technology, uh, which is really an adjacent technology than to bring essentially these designs which you have done in AI into real life applications and into the micro -organisms. What are your medium term growth ambitions, Michael, and how does MA support your strategic roadmap? Well, Brainless Biotech Company has clearly some strong growth ambitions. So, in the medium term, we aim to double our sales in the enzyme segment. This would require us to grow organically roughly about high single digit to low double digit, and hence faster than the market. 
Our total addressable market we have defined is about 2 billion sales. With around 50 million sales today, you can see we have plenty of space to grow here. Only want to grow our sales, but at the same time also increase our adjusted EBITDA margin from currently around 10% to 50%. This will not only give us top-line growth, but also attractive, positive operating leverage. Organic growth really is our top priority. m and I would say, we pursue more on a optimistic basis. So while we have been able to build quite a strong record in the last years, in terms of the acquisition of biocatalysts, rare tech, biosun, but also biotech, clearly new targets are not easy to find and also not easy to find for us. We target at least one more medium-sized acquisition in the next five years. The trail tech acquisition in terms of size is quite a good example of what we are searching for. What risks and opportunities arise from Brain's growing exposure to the U.S. market? The U.S. question is a really interesting one because the U.S. around 25 of our sales is already done to date in the United States. So with around 14 million of sales, that's quite big to compare to our size of the company, but of course still quite small compared to the huge market we have in the U.S. and the growth opportunities we think we can grasp there. We have faced by headwinds recently, particularly from the U.S. dollar, which has depreciated around 14% since we started our planning period at the beginning of the fiscal year. This had a negative impact of around 2 to 3 percentage points on our sales growth, and we do essentially expect the U.S. currency to stay weak for quite some time to come. Tariffs, of course, also an issue here in the United States, have generally a negative impact on international trade and cannot always be passed on immediately to customers, or not in full or basically in time. In addition, we are seeing a sharp decline in governmental funding, particularly for innovation projects, so coming out of universities and coming out of our state agency, this has a negative impact on our custom research organization. The group today has already a location in Tampa, Florida, with a certain amount of local added value, which can be further extended if needed over tariffs. In addition to the export route from the EU, we can also export directly from the UK. We can be a benefit essentially from lower tariffs of 10% in the UK compared to 15% for the European Union. I would say in general, the US is a net importer of specialized enzymes, particularly from Europe, Japan, and China. Tariffs therefore affect most of the enzyme players in a similar way, and ultimately they affect the US consumer. So my biggest worry right now, yes, really is which consequent might have of the consumer, i.e. are we going to be faced by new to consumer sentiment and buying behavior over time? So to summarize, I would say, while the situation we are certainly has become clearly more challenging from an operational perspective, the U.S. market remains a strong and attractive growth market for brain and we will further invest into that market. Michael, could you provide insight into which assets within the brain bio incubator demonstrate the strongest commercial potential? Investors have really focused a lot upon the bio bio incubator in former years. Now more and more we're focused on our enzyme business. Having said that, of course, also our bio incubator still has some very large projects in there with attractive upside from an investor perspective. The largest upside within that clearly comes from our pharma project. The first and foremost and most prominent, the Royalty Pharma Deocryptophan project. We have already received a prepayment of 18.4 million and can expect additional regulatory and sales related milestones of up to 120 million. Secondly, the exclusive licensing agreement with Premium Therapeutics or Gene Scissor with brain engineered cast technology for innovative cancer therapies will offer significant upside. Here we are looking at potential regulatory milestones of up to 92 million plus additional commercial milestones on top. Given the early stage of this project, value will crystallize here more later years. Thirdly, the Solar's Pure project, over the deprivement and consecutively better healing of chronic wounds, offers also considerable economic potential. Currently, the company is an extended phase 2A clinical trial, is looking to raise funds for phase 3 of clinical trials, and any advance in the clinical trials significantly will lift the value of our brain stake, which today stands at 3-4% in the Solar's Pure. We also have an interesting product with PX Group on microbial gold recycling, promising some interesting upsides. And in general, I would say all further commercialization projects from the pipeline will be actually taken quite positively by investors and will enhance the value of the company. Last question, Michael. What needs to happen for Brain Biotech's stock to re-rate? And what potential catalysts could drive investor interest? 
Well, that really is a good question. What needs to happen to actually vocal therapists to perform much better? But I think first and foremost, we need to come back to the path of organic growth. Now, of course, segment brain biochemicals. Secondly, we need to demonstrate positive operating leverage by a higher utilization of power asset base, harvesting increased synergies across the group, and producing an ever increasing rate of all fermented products, i.e., product innovation. Thirdly, continue our path of successfully commercializing the brain bioincubator products. As next triggers, I could see basically restarting the product growth engine in the new business here. I think if you show more licensing potential with recurring revenues to the street, specifically from strain licensing technology, we expect some further larger milestones of a royalty pharma transaction to be received within the current business year. We're still looking to find, to find new partners for our solar spearback to fund phase three of clinical trials, which would be received very positively by the capital markets. And last but not least, we have additional things that the buy incubator we haven't shown yet to the market, so be surprised. Thank you, Michael, for your time and the valuable insights into Brain Biotech's strategy and outlook. Investors interested in learning more can find additional videos on Seat 11A, including the elevator pitch, financial results, and ESG presentation. Each of these resources provides a deeper understanding of Brain Biotech's innovation and value creation story. Stay tuned for more insights from Brain Biotech here on this channel. Thank you very much for your really interesting and good questions. And of course, if there are any further questions arising, do not hesitate to contact me directly or Martina Schuster at Investor Relations. And we also have, I think, quite some extensive material available on Investor Relations website. Thank you very much. Disclaimer. As described in the legal section on our website, seat11a.com, this publication is for informational purposes only. This means it is not intended to provide you with any investment advice. Any opinion or recommendation expressed by the companies is neither given nor supported by us and should not be considered investment advice from our side. Also, remember that any opinion or recommendation expressed is subject to change without further notice. The content is obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, or timeliness. Seat11a.com and its employees disclaim all liability for any loss that may arise in any form from any use of the information in the video, audio, and on our website. We neither express any opinion on the future value of any security or other investment vehicle, nor recommend any investment based on the information provided. Please consider the publications and our website as a platform for companies to present themselves. You need to seek financial advice from an expert regarding the accuracy and appropriateness of the material presented or recommended by the companies in the publication. As we are just considered a publisher, we may hold and trade securities in the presenting company, whether it is a listed or private company. By consuming our content, you agree to these terms and the terms in our legal section on our website.